press this until it turns green and then you don't have to come right up to it but okay you can hear it okay and so sorry. so that let it turn green and then you can just talk you don't have to bring it up right up to you okay. or anything and like, does anything Toast, toast. Good evening, everybody. Ooh. Wow. Um, I'm going at 7 p.m. It's nice to see so many people here with us this evening. Welcome. And I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, I know that there is one board member planning on attending hybrid via Zoom. I don't see her on the screen, but um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and in his world, the liberty and justice for all. I would entertain a motion to adopt the January 10th, 2024 minutes. Motion made by Mark. Second. Oh okay, would well, somebody else want to make the motion? You want to make the motion, Alicia? Yes. Okay, do I get a second? Second. Seconded by Brendan. Is there any discussion or? On the minutes? Seeing or hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes for January 10th, please indicate so by raising your hand. Any abstentions? I thought, okay. Um, motion passes. Um, and now it's time for public comment. Thank you for raising your hand back there. I'm glad you approved the minutes. Maybe you'll run for Board of Ed someday. Um, is there anybody who would like to speak during public comment? Okay, seeing none. Um, board Chair's report. Um, I just want to um, remind the public, I'm going to sound a little repetitive these days, but we're going to enter into the budget setting process for the Board of Ed this coming month in February. And we'll be having a couple of workshops on the Board of Education budget. And public is the public and parents and anybody is welcome are welcome to come uh, talk to us about the budget or learn more about the budget by watching us online or um, by attending our, our meetings. Um, and we'll be handing off our budget to the Board of Finance uh, by March 15th. So decisions about next year will be made in the coming month and a half. And I know the, the superintendent and the staff have been working really hard and listening to input from all the schools. Um, and uh, we'll hear more about that. And I hope all board members have put the two special meeting dates on their calendar for the budget workshops. Thanks. Um, 
So we're going to start out with an exciting um, uh, feature that we've had at recent board meetings, which is each meeting we've um, heard from one of our schools. And tonight we're going to be hearing from Wyndham Center School. And I don't know who's kicking that off. You are? Well, I'm going to introduce their principal, Kathleen Goodwin, ask her to come up to the podium. And I see we have students, staff, and families in the room. So I'll hand it over to you, Kathleen, for Wyndham Center's What's Cool About Your School. So what's cool about our school is everything. And that's why everybody's here. So I'm very lucky and very privileged. I said to the staff, we have to put something together from the Board of Ed. And of course, there's lots of good things going on at Wyndham Center School. So I know it's you You had guys have a busy night, but we have a couple things to, to show you. I'm going to start with Mr. Campania, who's going to talk to you a little bit about our physical fitness scores and why we do so well at Wyndham Center School. And he has some friends that... Um, during our assemblies on Wednesday mornings, what happens is Colin has uh, students who have practiced during the week, um, the skills that are necessary for the physical fitness test. And then during the assembly, they are called up and they can plank, push up, sit up, whatever they want. And they do it with Colin too. And we count off sometimes and we play the Rocky theme and um, that's how we get everybody involved. So they're used to doing this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to introduce the kids? Uh... So from left to right is Grayson, and then we have Ezekiel, Alex, Andrew, Armani, Delilah, and Ruby, and a fine officer who volunteered. Nice job. And then we have the, the theme music. So they can plank, and Grayson will plank for, oh, I don't know how long Grayson can plank, but he'll plank during Mr. Rodriguez's performance right now. Mr. Rodriguez is going to tell us a little bit about um, the music, and he has Anisha Lee and David there. Thank you, Mr. C, and thank you to our physical fitness kiddos from Wyndham Center. Thank 
Thanks, Evangeline Lee and David and Mr. Rodriguez, of course. And then we have Miss Linsky and her letter getters. Mm -hmm. So our students at Wyndham Center School as part of what we do for social emotional learning um, on a weekly basis can write letters to anybody in the building. And we have envelopes everywhere. And then the students along with Miss Linsky pass them out as they feel good for, for our school community and culture. This is Aria and Genevieve. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We do this really cool thing called Letter Getter at our school. Students and staff write letters and place them in the mailbox. On Fridays, Ms. Linsky takes a few students to deliver the letters. Letter getters promote positive relationships in our school and help students practice writing. writing. Students wrote a letter for each of you. Now we will pass out pictures related to letter getter. Thank you and have a good night. Yeah, for me. Thank you. And last, we have, go ahead, Katina. Oh, <laughs> do you like David's little pouch? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have Mr. Gonzalez, and he has some students who put a trivia game together for you. Hi. Uh, I'm Mr. Gonzalez. With the help of my students, we have a, a quiz, seven questions, but I need a volunteer from the board. We know the answers. Okay, round of applause. Okay. <clears throat> start okay if you need any help look at their faces first question our building opened its doors for the first time 1922 1798 hey he got it right 1922 let's see the second one Third place right now. What is the longest distance somebody has to go to come to work? 35 miles. Mr. Katibin comes from Hartford. 213 miles. Miss Brown flies with her helicopter. No. Yes. He got it right. Now, our teachers have been rappers, bartenders, and sheriffs, plumbers, chefs, and yoga instructors. Oh, no. We got rappers and, and a sheriff. ¿Cuántas lenguas se hablan en la escuela? How many languages are spoken? Ocho, cinco, solo dos. Ah, eight, ocho. Mm. What is the shortest distance a teacher has to go every day to work? Miss Ron lives in the basement. No. <laughs> Miss Murphy is our neighbor. And in 1968, there was a big fire. How many firemen attended? Nearly 300. 
only 20 because they were former students, they were so smart and efficient. No, nearly 300 firemen were needed. And how many sets of twins do we have in Wyndham Center School? Three, none, two. Yes, they got it right. Oh, no, that. So you got all the points, round of applause for him. Learning is fun. Thank you. That's it. I want to thank Ray Lees um, and Thais and Mario um, for coming. They were supposed to help, but Brendan, we, we know you know technology, so you just took their job but thank you for coming and that's it for window center we are cool well that was that was wonderful i want to thank you all on behalf of the board and we really appreciate so many of you coming um to show how much you care about your school and how excited you are about the things that go on at your school each each day each week all year long and um so thank you very much. We have a long meeting ahead of us. You're welcome to stay for any or all of it if you would like, but we will not be offended if you decide now that you want to get up and go home and put your pajamas on. Thank you. And get that homework done. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, while everybody's uh, transitioning, um, thank you. I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of discussing the Wyndham Administrative Association contract. And we would be inviting Jessica, our attorney, Jessica Ritter, HR person extraordinaire, Grace, and uh, you, <laughs> Tracy Youngberg, our superintendent into that meeting with us. And we will be going into the office, main office conference room. So we can just follow um, each other in there. And for po people who are still in the room, uh, we don't know how long we'll be in there. You're welcome to sit here and wait until we come back. Thank you. And some of them are the survey committee that we'll be presenting shortly. So okay. thanks for hanging around. I said I would entertain a motion. Yes. So moved. Motion made by Brendan. Second. Seconded by Katina. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. And um, I would entertain a motion um, to adopt the Wyndham Administrative Administrators Association contract. So moved. Second. Motion made by Paula, seconded by Katina. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, looks like it's unanimous and we wanna thank uh, the, the administrators for um, their service to this district and you're very much appreciated, thank you. Um, and now we're on to the superintendent's report. Thank you very much. Uh, the first item on my report is just the biweekly check-in on student attendance and discipline. Um, I don't know if there's any specific questions about that data. I can tell you that today at our leadership uh, instructional PD, 
we did have a conversation related to um, our focus on reducing in and out of school suspensions in the district. I don't know if there's any questions. Um, Mary? Yeah, I, I just want to comment because, you know, uh, we discuss it at each meeting, of course, um, and last meeting, uh, you know, it came up that there have been many uh, impacts since COVID, and of course, that's on a global level. You know, it was a catastrophe, um, and, you know, Wyndham students would have additional uh stresses due to poverty. Um, but if adults are not in control, it, it's tragic and devastating for students. And I, I do think we have to be very mindful of what we say as, as board members and as adults. Um, we have to show we understand and obey rules. I mean, even when we are depressed or feeling emotional, um, we're role models for children. Um, we can acknowledge pain, but we also have to help children and support them to have choose better behaviors. So I, you know, have felt that this problem, I've been advocating for the climate uh, at the middle school really every year, I believe. And I believe that there will not be academic improvement if the climate does not improve. And that includes these discipline numbers. Um, I have wanted to know about restorative justice, disrupting the school to prison pipeline. So I I just, if I would like to know what the, the team has talked about. And I would also, there is data, but sometimes there's too much talk about data and not about the students and the lives of the students. So, you know, I, I am very troubled by the numbers as they are and have been. So I guess my comment would be that it's definitely information that should be shared in a workshop uh, setting in one of our future board meetings. I continue to connect with the middle school principal and we analyze the data and talk specifically about students and the things that they're doing. We did that today in our session with the administrators, but we can get it on the, on the schedule in the near future to have a more detailed discussion about it. I think we had talked about that um, at the last meeting and had agreed that we would set a workshop session on this topic. So um, if anybody has any thoughts about how they would like to see that, you know, what they would like to see reflected in that discussion and maybe any um, specific things they'd like to talk about, make sure we talk about, please let me know so that we can work on that because it does merit a full uh, board discussion with the right people in the room with us. So thank you. Okay, next on my list is just to let the board know that we continue to focus on the budget preparation uh, for 24, 25, have our trusty finance director in the room. Um, we have met with all of the schools and departments uh, and and made some projections around staffing and non-staffing budget lines. And we hope to have some more formal numbers in the very near future. Um, I don't know if there's any specific questions about the budgets, but the board is aware that we'll be presenting that information very soon. Um, budget workshop is February 21st, if I remember correctly. And the next one is March 6th or something like that. So, um, we look forward to that discussion. Next up on my report is just a check-in on our policy work. On tonight's agenda, the board will see a number of policies that are being repealed. They are being repealed because our attorneys have indicated that they are not mandatory. So we are moving right along in this overhaul of the district's policies. So kudos to the team, to the policy committee, and all that support that work. Next is the ARP ESSER updates, and in front of the board members is an actual is the actual um, communication from the State Department of Education about the extension of the ARP ESSER funds. It's not actually an extension of the funds; it's a liquidation application that you can apply for. Um, 
So it's one of the things that Rita and I hope to get to tomorrow, um, if all goes well, to have the conversation about all the areas, all the things that we projected, um, the expenditures we projected under ARP ESSER and, and what is potentially still available and where we're, what we're doing next. And I have uh, let Rita know that we'll be notifying the board of, of where we are with that once we've had those discussions and have some numbers to share. The same type of information we share at our monthly finance and audit meetings. And last but not least is just to extend an invitation to all the board members to the Phoenix Academy tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. They have their very first student graduating uh, from our alternative high school, so we're really proud of that, and um, you're all welcome to attend. Any other Thank questions? you. Are there any questions? Okay. Um, hearing none, we're going to go on to discussion section of the agenda, and the topic this evening is the District Survey Committee presentation. All right, so I'm going to go up to the podium and kick off the presentation, share the beginning slides, and sort of give you an overview of how the committee functions. We have committee members in the room who can help with the summary slides. I have Mr. De La Barrera on the, he's zooming in for us. He's willing to do the middle school slide. I don't know how it's going to work, so it may end up being someone pinch hitting just because of the way we're set up technology wise, but we'll work on it. All right. Oh, everybody can hear me. So first, I just want to remind the board that we contracted with Panorama Education. Um, it was a survey service that cost the district about $20,000. Uh, we had anticipated, because we spent so much money on the survey, that there wouldn't be a lot of manpower that needed to be put toward the survey because we thought we were paying them for those services. That did not actually end up happening. There was a number of um, pretty significant issues that Holly and people in our office had to sort of fill the gaps on. Uh, and we had a major issue with their translations in Spanish and Robinson in the back ended up doing the translations for us. So when I think about the efficiency of spending this money and what we got for the money, I'm not recommending we continue down this path because we did almost as much work as we did last year, but we paid for it. So we have to definitely figure that out. Uh, my initial plan was for us not knowing it was going to be like this was for us to run a second survey in the spring and do sort of a comparison on at least some of the questions. I don't know if that makes sense now, given all the time and energy we put forth. We did get a ton of information from the survey that I think is gonna be helpful in making improvements at the school department and district level. Um, but I'm, I, I would like to talk to the board more about what's gonna happen for the spring check-in um, and just, understanding that we learned a lot in the last few weeks um, that we didn't anticipate. So that's where we started. So I think someone's advancing the slides for me. All right, so I just wanna celebrate um, the district survey committee members um, who were part of this process. Many of them were their part of the process last year. They are representative of our variety of bargaining units and non-affiliated staff. Um, and by the way, board members, you have copies of the slideshow in front of you. And I think you can see it on the screen. Actually, the front screen isn't advancing. Is that on purpose? It is now? Okay, good. Oh, good. Um, so we have a, a nice uh, sort of overview of the district in this committee. Uh, next slide, please. So we pushed out the survey to students in grades three to five, uh, students in grades six through 12, staff members, both certified and non-certified, and our families. Next slide, please. Uh, we, we put the comparison data in terms of the survey participation in two forms. This is your little bar graph. You can see last year's participation rates compared to this year's. And then we just did a little summary chart on the next slide, please. So you can see that we had um, approximately 78% of the students in grades three to 12 responded to the survey. 67% of our staff members. And it was a little more difficult to identify the family percentages. What we did was we pulled families based on unique addresses, but then families, whoever lived in that unique address 
any adults that lived in that house could have answered the survey. So I'm not exactly sure what percentage is, um, but you can see about 880 families out of 2,136. Any questions so far? To me, I think we did a decent job on participation. I'd like to see that continue uh, to increase, but it much better than last year. All right, the next slide that's up on your screen is just a quick little snapshot um, from all of the district information around this question of how positive is your work environment or how positive are the attitudes of your colleagues. We looked at this data from the certified staff members and the non-certified staff members. Um, they could answer the question as extremely positive, somewhat positive or not positive at all. Um, so Panorama Education considers it a favorable response if they answered in the extremely or the somewhat category. So you can see the percentages there. We put in red, any percentage that falls below an 80% favorable uh, setting there so that you can see that we know we have to have follow-up conversations. Um, and that was one of the discussions we had this morning with my leadership team. What kinds of questions can we ask um, to figure out why people were feeling the way they were feeling and what can we do to support the improvements? A lot of information on that slide. I don't know if there's any specific questions. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this is another really important question that we asked um, our students in grades six through 12, our families in pre-K to 12, our certified and non-certified staff. We asked them whether they feel emotionally safe in their buildings, um, whether they feel their children are emotionally safe. We asked them the same question about being physically safe as well. So you can see the data there uh, across all of our schools and central office and district wide. Would you take a minute to sort of let that sink in? It's a lot of information. And again, any places where you see the red, that would indicate that we fell below the 80% favorable mark and we have follow up information. I'm sorry, Mary, do you have a question? Oh, okay. Any other questions on this slide? Next slide, please. I just have a comment. Oh, sure. Uh, not a question. Um, it is a lot of information to take in. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm assuming the board can have some time to let this sink in, and then we can come back and have a discussion about Absolutely. how we are dealing with the particularly the red, the, the things that come up with in red so that we can understand better. Sure. Um, and that's what the committee will show you is they have made um, recommendations for next steps. Okay. Um, and we were discussing those today and I'm going to present all that to the board once I've had a chance to process all this through and we'll develop action plans around how we can show improvement and actually what the data means because we need to find out why people were feeling the way they were feeling like what's behind their responses. O overwhelmingly though, there's a large percentage of people that feel Emotionally safe in their buildings. Uh, uh, since I don't have the actual question, um, when when we discuss this further, can someone define for me emotionally safe? So it it was up to the person's interpretation. So I'm okay. guessing that they they're feeling like their feelings are mm -hmm. valued. Um, they're safe to speak their mind, to be comfortable, to be so, who they are. I mean, it could be interpreted many different ways. Defined. No, it was not defined. And that's a good point. Any other questions? Uh, next slide, please. This is the question about feeling physically safe in their building. And we had many conversations about this slide as well. Again, a lot of... Um, positive, favorable responses and some areas that we know we need to work on. Um, one of the big discussions that came up was the difference between the, the staff members and the students at Wyndham High School, for example. Um, and then again, similar to, to Katina's question, what was their, uh, what to them did it mean to be physically safe? Are they, are they worried about their physical safety, uh, you know, in terms of outside 
impact, you know, outside uh, issues related to public education? Are they worried to their physical safety in the building? Is it related to their to the construction project? How did they define physical safety? So we need to follow up with the staff around that. And uh, Lynn, to your point, um, if you saw the amount of paper, every every school has a, a, a data set from all of the questions for their families, students, um, certified, non-certified staff. So it is a significant amount of information. And Holly and I were trying to talk about um, how we how we were going to get the board that information. I mean, it's it's a massive undertaking. So we're not we haven't actually figured that out yet. But I'm open to suggestions as to what the board wants to see. Any other questions on this slide? Yes, Mary. So how did you distill these particular things to show us tonight? So I, I didn't distill them. We basically pulled them from, did you bring a, a copy of one of the, oh no, you didn't? Okay, so well, we can get it. Um, we basically took that off the panorama survey. They did the calculations, which by the way, another thing not to complain about our $20,000, but they actually miscalculated several areas like misadded things that we found their mistakes on their summary sheets. So that's a problem. But what we did was just pull from the actual panorama data and put it in a chart so I could show you a comparison. So you'll see the actual questions when you look at the, the, the actual school's data. This is just a summary. Any other questions? Okay. Do you have a, no? Okay. Next question is the um, was a question around whether the superintendent myself clearly communicates a district vision. So you can see the responses from the certified and non-certified staff members. All right, so now we're up to the district survey committee who we're gonna bring up in just a second. Uh, we met, they met for uh, between 9.30 and two o'clock on January 19th. They got, we actually rolled in all of the paper that we're talking about that makes up the survey uh, data. We had our three largest schools. Um, we tackled those first and then a couple of our committee members worked on the elementary schools. We still have not summarized data for the Wyndham Early Childhood Center beyond, beyond what I've shown you tonight. Um, the central office data and the Phoenix Academy. So we're still working on that because it's an enormous amount of information. So I'm gonna let the committee take it over from here. The slides moving forward come straight from the um, anchor charts that they developed in this session that they um, took part in on January 19th. We asked them to look for three things, strengths and celebrations, areas of concern or in need of improvement and wonderings or, or things that they saw in the survey that they wanted more information on. So those three things were their task and I'm gonna hand it over. Um, next slide, I don't, I can't, okay. So we're starting with Wyndham High School. So then Pam, that's you. All right, and, and Pam wasn't the only one from Wyndham High School working on the survey data. There was actually Kathy Colgin and Michelle Daleb were there as well. So it's all yours, Pam. Good evening. Um, yes, I'm very grateful to Kathy Colgin, who's a teacher at Wyndham High School and a WFT executive board member, and to Michelle Daleb, who's an administrative assistant and also president of her union. So they were very, very helpful um, as we worked together. So like Dr. Youngberg said, there were a so much information. There were, uh, you know, categories of questions that we worked through. So the first thing that we tried to discern was what were the things that we can celebrate and what are the strengths of our high school? So our students um, answered that they feel both emotionally and physically safe at school and that overall the family and our staff feel that relationships between students and teachers are respectful ones. Uh, they found 84% of families found communications helpful, whether that's um, all calls, which people can get through text messages, they can get through 
phone messages and they can get through emails as well as um, you know letters and postcards that we send throughout the year and events that we have at our school. Um, Wyndham High School exceeded the district averages in student survey. I'm not sure what this what this one means right here. Yeah, that was um, on the questions that were asked in this uh, category around the students there, the high school's data actually was higher than other places in the district in six of six metrics is what they're saying. And then this is I think we lost their connection, huh? I just sent a message. Hopefully, we fix it. <laughs> I got disconnected with the sound and the audio. Now I, it went back, so I'm not sure. I see. I don't know if we're on the right slide here. We're still with high school right now. Yeah, Carlos, I don't think any of us can hear right now. Any of us online can't hear what's going. I just messaged Robinson to see if he can fix it. Thank you. Robinson said they're working on it, so they're aware. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. that were uh, really, so this, the families weren't seeing this, the families, so the families were seeing this, 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 the families were Wyndham Middle School data is next, and I know Carlos is on the call, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to actually moderate from Zoom. I think Candy said she's willing to go through the slides for us. Is he able to actually? I don't know if you can hear me. Um, oh, I lost the communication. He's willing to do it, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Try Carlos. Okay. Can you hear me right now? Okay. 
Go ahead, Carlos, if you can oh, do it. Yeah, okay, awesome, thank you. Hey, I'm very sorry, I apologize for not being uh, in person. I'm just sick today and I couldn't um, attend in person, unfortunately. Um, uh, so I'm going to go through this um, slides. Uh, as Pam mentioned, we look at the celebrations of strengths first, and this is an average of the first 91% average of staff, certified and uncertified, who feel um, uh, positive when asked about the school climate, leadership, and relationships. So this is a combination of all those three averages, 91%. Uh, feel favorable, favorable about that. Uh, we notice 89% of all staff often witness students helping peers, uh, which is something we would like to see students doing this, not only as um, in, in the part of the social emotional, but also in the academics is um, another average we have with staff, uh, certified and uncertified is 94% feel emotionally and physically safe and feel information is communicated well in the school. 90% um, of our sta staff will recommend working at Wyndham Middle School to someone else who is looking for a job. And uh, majority of the students, 94%, believe their ability to put in effort and control behavior. This is um, in part what we also wanted to see from the students is your mindset, positive mindset. And both teachers and staff hold strong relationships with families. And that's 98%, that's their, um, that's their uh, perception or their uh, relationships. Areas of improvements, 59% um, of certified staff uh, feel trusted uh, to teach content in a way they feel is best. So this is a conversation we had, and I wanted to take an, uh, an opportunity to thank um, Kathy Brillon. Um, she is our art teacher, but also is our um, WFT uh, union rep who um, helped me um, at that during that meeting that we had uh, put all this information together. Um, anyway, so 59% of the staff is really feels like um, eh, they want to find more flexibility in the way they feel is the best way to teach. And we were having conversation about the type of curriculum we have, pacing guides and scribe um, curriculums that really uh, request a lot of uh, following a certain uh, way of teaching. Um, so we need to work on that and see how much we can go and um, find a middle ground. Um, then 60% feel they have input on important decisions. And this is another thing we need to work on. Uh, we are meeting every, this year we're meeting every week with the team leaders um, to discuss um, and find their input in all the decisions, but we need to look more in depth into what this means for, for our uh, teachers and staff. And then 65% of the students feel they have at least one adult they trust within their building. Um, so we have a few wonderings here. And uh, so we are focusing on those students who did say that they didn't feel 15% uh, who didn't feel um, uh, physically uh, safe in the school. And we would like to know, like um, it was mentioned before, what is the source of this? How is this question interpreted? Um, I was looking at the students' comments, which there are not that many. They don't tend to write much um, in general, and in this case, it didn't. Uh, but there were a handful about safety, uh, very, very few. And at least three of those were related to violence in general, what is happening outside of the, the school, the district, which is uh, the insecurity that we see nationwide. That that was their, um, their uh, concerns. <clears throat> Then we will look at this other question. Um, and then what was the uh, beverage of the question of having a trusted adult in the building? Um, so we need to figure out if they, they were clear about what the question um, was asking. Um, and then you also wanted to touch base on um, when we ask um, the staff, uh, how we include the staff in the important uh, decision making. And again, this is we need to go back and look at uh, what this really means for us. Um, as um, you know, we have opportunities uh, to do this, but definitely if, if that's what the perception is, we need to 
um, dig more into these uh, concerns. I don't know if you have any questions that I might be able to answer. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not really a question. It is that's just saying, I think this is devastating. Um, when when the the percentage is high, we're not saying or in something positive. We don't say was it the way the question was worded. Um, I I think we absolutely need to look at this issue. And fifteen percent of students feel physically unsafe, and then we're looking at the discipline material every two weeks. I don't think there's much of a mystery here, you know. And you know, staff. Do they feel trusted to teach content? I mean, these numbers are extremely concerning to me. And we need to confront this as a challenge and focus on improving this and not uh, avoid the issues while whitewashing them. So I don't think we avoided the issues in any way. I think our conversations were very straightforward where all of us were focused on improvements. We just had all the information in front of us and were able to ask questions based on the survey data, the open comments, the feedback, the professionals in the room. None of this came about because we're trying to avoid the issues. We're just giving, they're giving their honest summary of what they think is going on. And then we're going to set up the action plans to go from there. Yes, and I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Unfortunately, the, the audio coming from the building, it, it, it is hard to, to understand what is uh, the question or the comment, but I, I'm here, I can hear uh, Dr. Yamberg very clearly, and I, I agree with her 100%. There's no uh, ill intention here to um, hide anything from, from anyone. This is uh, raw data that we got just from the from the um, the surveys, and uh, we trust that this um, you know clear data. And, and as we see in every single um, school, there's areas of improvement. And the reason we are uh, sharing this part of the uh, concerns is exactly because uh, we wanted to make sure we. Um, address this and make it maybe make it uh public i mean that's why we are putting uh, the uh, concerns that we have um eh, and we try to balance the positives with the negatives so um but i i i hope that when the board has a little more time and look into the data more in detail uh we'll uh we'll see that um this is what we um we have right now and we're working hard. I don't know if there was something else in the, the your comments about um, the um, the behaviors uh, that was brought up before that part I heard. Um, and again, I hope that we we had meetings with I had meetings with Dr. Yumber and very clearly um, set all the data over there. And I will really, I think it will really be awesome to have. Any, any, anyone, or anyone with uh, concerns about the school climate, to visit the school and see what it is really the climate of the school. Once you're there, you can see, uh, <clears throat> you can see the 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 especially the changes. Something I'm hearing uh, very, very often from different people uh, from the community staff, um, the changes they are seeing uh, moving in the right direction. So. Um, please feel free to come and visit the school anytime. Thank you, Carlos. And we Thank are going you. to have a follow-up um, board workshop around student discipline and specifics. So more to come on that, you'll definitely be involved in that discussion as well as uh, some of our other principals. Appreciate Thank you. that, Carlos. Thank you. Again, I mean, we are trying to absorb a lot of information and some of it is very hard to see, right? It's, it's very, it means, it indicates where there are areas that we really need to see and do the work on. And I respect the fact that this is pretty recent, survey is pretty recent and 
there's been just a very little time for people to, in schools to absorb the feedback. And I know there were a lot of written comments too, but none, um, none data oriented, but actually uh, free writing on certain open responses on things. So um, I look forward as, as a board member to hearing back throughout the year um, reports from the different schools on what kind of strategies and changes they put in place to address the areas that are highlighted in red and, and especially areas where people are not feeling safe, staff and students who are not feeling heard um, because we need to we need to work. And it's not a it's, it's I, I acknowledge that, that we need to fit it into our board schedule over the throughout the year as this well and we need to figure out how to get you this information because the survey team spent five and a half hours right? and didn't even get through all of it so i just need you to put that in perspective and they were working in teams so we're gonna have to figure it out i mean if you put this survey on my evaluation and made it a priority for me so we're gonna get through what the data says we need to focus on we're going to work on including the things that need to be improved i can guarantee that but it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of information so so we have to and you can't do everything once you have to practice on some things at the time yeah i still want to just point out that we're using our own staff members to identify the strengths and celebrations and the areas that need improvement i again stand by the fact that that's going to be the most effective way to actually improve things in the district next i'd like to invite up tammy nagin Poirier. she is an academic coach at suny school and the president of the wft she's going to take care of arrows i'll take care of arrows um i was able to work alongside the side school as well as recentials when we looked at arrows data and just to echo um, what Tracy has said and Lindsay said, it is a lot of information to get through. Barrows is unique in that we had 10 packets to get through the Barrows because they have two sets of student surveys. All the other schools have just one set. So we were presented with a packet that had the data, the numerical data. And then we had a packet that had the comment data. So think about the amount of survey by students, two sets of students at Barrows, and then families times two. So we had 10 packets of information to get through. And I'm um, happy to say that I believe if you get everything, if I did the math right, you know, um, it would be 76 packets that we get to look at. So it, it, the undertaking is, is great. So um, what I did with my team, we decided to look at strengths and celebrations and organize it by staff and combine the non certified and social, and then students and then finally families. And so, overwhelmingly, um, as a strength at Barrows, the staff and student interactions were very high percentage, very popular. Teacher efficacy, they feel um, really able to able to teach their students. And the communication with families and families being friendly and respectful towards them, that is also very high in the US. And also the staff's confidence in our superintendent's vision is extremely high. The strengths and celebrations with the student surveys um, the students there feel physically safe. And the reason we put six to eighth graders is because that question was not asked of the third and fifth graders. We didn't ask them physically safe or emotionally safe questions. Um, and then all the students overall felt very confident about their school home. The families feel that the school and district communication is helpful. And then they also feel very positively about the conduct of theirs. 
in the areas for improvement among the staff, they felt that the school kind of needed improvement. Um, they reported feeling unsupported and they would like more input and decision. I'm not sure that we not the numbers, but I'll say that. Um, the students were very loud and clear um, about building the blocks. We have some very interesting comments on the, uh, the feeling about the blocks. And 32% of students in grades 6 to 8 felt that they did not have an adult at school that they feel they could count on. And that was really alarming for us because that's one of the students. And then families, they felt that school safety, they weren't as positive with what their feelings about school safety. And then I wonder, just to make it over and to each of you, we wonder if the responses would be different among K-5 staff and 6 to 8 staff, because we, we got all the staff together with the data reporting data. And so we were just, we wondered, would that look different if you were a third grade teacher versus an eighth grade teacher? Um, and the question of recommending the school or recommending the district, we wondered if that question had been separated out. Because the way the question was posed was, would you recommend a friend to teach in your school or district? And it was one question. But to me, that's two separate things. My school is one thing, the district is another. So that was just one of the wonderings that we had that we needed to and I don't know if there are any questions. Next slide, please. So the elementary schools that actually were tackled by Liz Baumgartner, our director of elementary ed, and Holly was Liz's partner. Um, and they were working on all four elementary schools. So I'll hand over to Liz. Um, I have a little bit of side on this. Um, Holly and I actually did a job together. We had all four schools, so we actually worked on two of the schools because there was so much information. And then later on this week, we went through that last two. Um, but overall, for starts and celebrations regarding uh, elementary schools, school climate, um, possible schools was um, shown to be a positive. Um, majority of students have a trusted adult um, at school, which is an important question for us to ask. And we really looked at that question last year. Um, and this year as well, um, because even if one student does not have a trusted adult, that is it. We want all of our students to have that. Our staff feel safe physically and very emotionally safe in their schools. And also, we're um, the uh, superintendent's vision for communication. Areas for improvement. Um, these are all trends among all schools. There are specific. Um, each one of the schools obviously had their own unique responses, but we were looking at common threats or trends across the schools. So areas for improvement was for our communication and engagement. Um, additional supports for challenging behaviors. Um, higher than expected student trends across all elementary schools. And this was one that we um, we're looking at it, uh, closely in regards to emotional uh, emotion, emotional regulation, self management of emotions, and ability to articulate feelings. And when you see your the surveys and you're able to look at them, there are specific questions under each one of those categories. And so we really were analyzing that. And though in some cases, what we were looking at is even if someone said, you know, positive, those last two categories, though someone or the last one or did not feel a certain way, um, we combine those because really we wanted all of our students to be able to say that they are able to manage their emotions um, or their, have the ability to articulate feelings, et cetera. Um, so we were looking at that a bit closer for this, um, for this section. Um, and so we were looking also in regards to areas where we needed some more information. 
So again, to this one question, we want to delve into motion uh, regulation and self management and try to determine the majority at a particular grade level, whether it was all, you know, mostly third graders, mostly fourth graders, mostly fifth graders, or a combination of all of, of those three, in case we needed to target a particular grade level. And then the communications piece actually played out in regards to absolutely our communication platforms. There was a lot of comments, um, particularly from families, from the teachers, in regards to the platforms that we use, whether it's um, Parent Square or some other platforms that are being used throughout um, the district for communication and what is best to reach our families. Um, and so we need to look at usage consistency, what are we using most across the district, and have a consistent communication platform um, that we all use. And then also who just has access to that. Who can see it, who can, um, who's able to access it out of the community um, and also within the school. It seemed to vary depending on schools. Thank you very much, Lee. Really appreciate it. And again, I just want to thank all of the committee members and Ellie, thank you for being here tonight. I know you weren't able to come to us last time, but I appreciate you being here. Um, you did a lot of work and there's still more work to be done, so I really do truly appreciate your efforts. So next slide is just, um, we're going to be doing more work as a district around the, the idea of uniforms. Uh, these are the percentages of the families, students, certified, non-certified staff in favor of district uniforms. So we're going to be talking more about this topic as we move forward, but that's what the survey questions say in terms of who's in favor and who isn't. And so our next step around this is, well, listen to any um, questions or feedback that the board members have, but we need to figure out how to get you this information because I don't know if it's going to end up being a shared drive or just boxes of material. I'm not exactly sure, but we need a plan. <laughs> Do people on the board have any questions, comments, or any opinion on how they would like to see that information? And a shared drive that was a box. Any thoughts? Mark? I'm not sure in, in terms of the specific, but part of what I'd like to see is the format or the, the method where you're going to do it versus I'm concerned about some of the numbers and teacher satisfaction. And, uh, so, how are we going to find out from a particular group why that group didn't feel valued or safe or? You can't have more questions. You have to either it's to be easier. So I'm not going to do that in terms of like our action steps to actually try to understand or understand and improve. Yeah, why, why is only 4% of the borough is that going to happen? Sure. That was a big point. Sorry, it's like, yeah. You know, and are we going to relate that to the management? Is there a certain situation to it? Absolutely. And of course, um, and how uh, anonymous and private and what methods we can use to ask for both groups. Uh, okay, so what is it that is making you sick or feel hurt or reduced, you know, that you're valid? And what do you need to do to, to help others feel equally valid? So, um, I don't know how to tell you how to do it. With uh, comment boxes, or you know, but it needs to be in the school discussed in, in the schools. Uh, in the you know, uh, one of the workshops or in the staff meeting, which I tend to be short, but so this is our resource. How are we gonna improve this? What is it that we need to do? You know, to feel valued and influenced, and the parents, yeah. The influence of outside, right? Um, 
Are you saying how how would we engage? Are you suggesting or asking? I'm not sure how we would engage. It's one thing to engage the the, the staff in people working to fill correct and the student figuring out ways to engage students through whatever format mm -hmm. uh, in, in building yeah. solutions to I uh, mean to address some of the issues. And uh, I'm more concerned about yeah. Yes, and I'm more concerned about letting us at each school to really participate in how, how we can change that climate for the percentages that are not satisfied that how we can get the material. Uh, and share time is fine with me. I mean, um, that's what's important in work in the school. Thank you for clarifying that response. Anybody else want to speak up on anything right now? Paula? Has been interested in the um, difference in, in, in answers from uh, when the middle school versus our uh, six to eight grade events. Just to see if there is a pretty significant difference. And again, you know, the school gets middle school students versus having a six year old in a school that gets to eight. Any anything else? I want to thank everybody who's here and who's not here tonight um, for their work to call through this and even put this presentation together. And as we have all recognized this evening, there's a lot of work to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're on to committee reports and the team policy committee. Uh, thank you, Holly, and the team, the administrative team, and the chairman folks for being there. As you see, if you were part of the room, hopefully, um, we will finish by this year. All of the reviews, and we have some policies to consider for your people tonight. I truly appreciate all, all the work you've done in this, this policy. And once again, I have no problem voting for these the fields as recommended by our attorney and our staff, but I'm still curious. Was I asked, I think last month, what is taking their place? So, for instance, uh, vandalism, you know, uh, surrender of prison rights that evidence. I see that they may be outdated, but should we replace them with something? Well, I think the notation, like, Definitely. you know, under psychotropic drug use, we have an updated model policy previously adopted. But, you know, but for school resource officer, am I now being written to go or is that not coming under a different policy? I mean, that's some small reference to what. How oh, you have not reviews. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark, for saying that. Um, uh, for example, the violence uh, is included in the in the uh, student discipline. Um, and so, so is the other type of behaviors. And uh, um, uh, maybe for me, that we can um, sign which. Um, so one of the things that's come up repeatedly is that we have had on the books board policies that aren't actually policies. They're the statement of things that exist in other exist in laws that are, that are already happening, and for whatever reason, when the public schools had them down as board policies, and they didn't need to be. So part of some of these go back to that. I'm not 
not actually policy. You're saying they're in a statute or a regulation. Or a so we don't need to go. Yes. Well, yes, that has happened quite frequently. It appears to have been a time period where a lot of those policies were adopted something like 20 years ago, and they, they're not actually necessary. And that's what the attorneys are telling us. They're not legally necessary because they already exist in some other statute. Yes, and also, as I very carefully um, look at all of these and our policies from from King, um, if you look in our uh, new uh, web page, the ones that have been approved already, uh, some of these concepts are also included there. And if you look at the um, report that we all have from um, Superintendent, so he tells you exactly why is that not necessary. And some of the statutes and cases have been that the law doesn't exist, and other it is you know. And in some cases, the attorneys have made notations in our giant spreadsheet. But if you keep the policy on the books, you actually hold the district to a standard that you can't necessarily meet. Like we have more than more hoops to jump through than, than the law even requires us because it's a board policy. So well, we can get you the specifics that you're asking for. You know, I'm just I'm not asking for paragraphs, just like I said, this, this notation, model policy previously adopted, is fine for me. Uh, school resource officer, we, now he's under discipline. Just a, a, a quick notation. Yeah. Or you know, redundant and not, not required by law. I don't accept the fact that the attorney and the staff have done their job. I don't think it's going to be here. Yeah. So I don't want to think I'm voting to get rid of the school resource officer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so now we're on to uh, curriculum committee report. Mary? Uh, yeah, so um, we met last week. So, uh, <laughs> um, and we talked about social and emotional learning. Um, also, the new uh, statutorily required uh, suicide prevention training that all of uh, the staff were trained in, and it's ongoing for another year. So, we need staff who are hired to get that. Um, we just reviewed some of the social and emotional learning uh, things we discussed last year. Um, and also, they do the Death Row Student Strengths Assessments. Um, and that is a kind of measure of where students are emotionally. We can come here for about three minutes a year. And uh, the community members question if some of that information can be used, for example, at the middle school to find out, you know, because it gives some measures that are supposed to inform teaching, um, character education, and or reading needs assessment. So there was going to be some follow up about that. Um, there's cognitive behavioral intervention uh, or trauma education. And there's also the fast forward grades five through 12, and there's bounce back um, some sort of um, trauma education for what is it, K to five students. Um, we discussed the when the Phoenix Academy and the project emo, although that did raise some press, additional questions um, about the staff um, for the grant funded people coming into the school and you know, uh, you know, things like the policies around the student privacy and you know, outside teaching, but we were going to have some follow-up about that as well. And for future uh, topics we we're hoping to learn about, you know, co-op learning or um, what is it? Um, work study internships. <laughs> if anyone else wants to add anything, anybody want to make a comment? I think uh, one of the questions I had was, um, if the um, the 
But that's when you share with parents and share with the teachers also. So we, we do use the desk in our schools. I don't know if it's something that gets submitted to all the teachers, but I know it helps drive some of their social skills groups um, and SEL sorts of spirits. Go ahead. I was going to follow the next minute. Okay, fair enough. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mary, and the rest of the committee. Um, now we're on to school planning and design, Bradley. Thank you. Um, next, when was that last week? I'm with you. Uh, we had a great discussion on the elementary school consolidation. Uh, Dr. Youngberger and then she contacted the uh, state department of uh, uh, the reflection and development in their office about how to best move forward uh, with getting this to referendum. Uh, we had suggested that we probably have a better chance if we start uh, with the program and during this. We already saw that we were going to have a signature and grow under the resource of the project. Um, which led to a further discussion about the order of operations to get this to the referendum. Um, uh, and we uh, will be bringing this to a uh, full discussion with the board in the upcoming workshop to ensure we can come to the um, and then the facilities updates at that meeting. Um, and then we have a discussion with the IP on the way to the access to the Thank you, Brandon. Anybody have any comments, questions? Mary? Yeah, it did come up that um, the board does need to have a committee that is looking at consolidation. Um, even if it doesn't have to be a building committee yet, um, sort of a precursor to that, just to stay informed and to make sure the public is informed. Um, so um, that was one comment. Another is um, I just was going to ask Brendan, um, maybe in the future uh, for school planning and design meetings, um, if we could find out are there um, baby alarms at the high school uh, in the bathrooms? And because I was reading one of the policies on uh, students, I guess maybe it was a busy plan. Just going through all the many things that talk about, of course. Um, but I know some schools do have um, great alarms. Also, I would like to know about the integrated pest management plan, which has suddenly come up as a point that is needed for the high school renovation and that. We have a policy, but I'm, I'm not sure why we don't have the plan that the landscapers need. So I just want to, you know, highlight what Brendan said about us having a workshop session as a full board event about the. Elementary school consolidation issue. And we'll, we'll, we'll figure out when we can pull that off you know, in the not too far future. And out of that, I think will come the discussion, Mary, about what kind of um, committee or group we put together. So thank you. So then just follow. Uh, the integrated pest management plan is something our facility director is working on um, alongside the high school um, construction team that's working on our field. So I think that's going to be addressed and uh, taken care of in the next couple of days. They already met several times within the day. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to personnel and follow up. Um, personnel and then Monday evening. And while it was a very short meeting, um, there was a lot <laughs> that's going on in HR uh, between the initiatives, um, the employee uh, recognition committee has been working hard and citing folks within the district that are deserving, um, assisting the uh, individual schools relative to finding uh, candidates to fill in their spots. Um, researching other school districts uh, across the country uh, that have uh, instituted programs of recruiting 
uh, teachers from the out of the country, which is part of uh, Puerto Rico, um, and continuing to work with UConn CNA uh, regarding student teacher placement. Um, they participated in the Educator Horizon Summit at the University of Bridgeport in attending the uh, CSB Increasing Diversity. And I had to list them all because they're all coming in. So I won't go through all of them, but I will say that they have been extremely busy. Um, they continue to do school visits, um, meeting with staff and such. Um, and uh, attending career fairs and recruiting opportunities, um, the Connecticut College Consortium website, Handshake website, our Connecticut hires are places that are now in, in advertising for staffing. They've been doing a lot as a team in central office um, in conjunction with some of the programs that are going on in the different schools. The PJ Day for the Kids Initiative. What is that? I can see that. Um, raising $60 for the Connecticut uh, Children's Foundation and then uh, participating with, I believe it's a high school, in filling the van food drive, um, delivering lots of food to the Covenant um, soup kitchen. So lots and lots of things that have been going on, bringing in some high school students to do some of the judging of the gingerbread house decorating, uh, which is just an opportunity to get students into Central Office to see the different job opportunities there, and hopefully inspire uh, some of our high school students to uh, go on to the greater fields. So uh, they're very creative. Uh, we also talked about the, um, the new space requirement uh, to uh, develop a plan on increasing educator diversity. Uh, that plan will be developed and it will come before the board uh, for approval before it goes to the state. We also uh, zeroed in a, a little bit more on the timeline for um, the superintendent's midterm assessment and then moving on to the final evaluation. And Tracy, thank you. She's uh, putting the tools and the timeline in an email so that we will go on. And I'm sure I've missed a whole bunch of things because there was a lot, but I uh, think that I have some questions. And we will have all the slides available for uh, the committee for our minutes. Please. Thanks, Paula. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Now we're on to action items. Um, the first item is possible action on the Wyndham Administrators Association contract. Yeah, that's what I thought we did. I jumped the gun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Creepy and I, you know, yeah, we did take action. We had a motion. I don't know. We did it immediately when we came back from executive session. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're a little concerned between uh, Brendan's actions on the quiz and this time. We may have to leave that recall. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think that is on Zoom. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, she's been with us all along. Yes, yes, moved everything down very quickly. Um, so we're on to action item number B, approval of the RFP for the full replacement of both the walk-in floor and freezer at Wyndham Middle School that closed 1-19-2024, for which a bid winner has been accepted. Um, so Motion made by Brendan. Who made that motion? Kevin, do I get a second? 
and I seconded by Katina and your discussion. Mark. Yes, this is my order. I'm curious why I approved an RFP that said it's already been sent. Eric's on. Eric? Uh, yes, I'm here on the I'm I'm on the call, but I I'm sorry, Mark, I did not hear the question. Well, I was a it's sort of board viewpoint. It's we're asking for approval from the board to the RFP, but you're almost telling me that this bid's already been accepted. So my whether I approve it or not, it seems to be accepted. Uh the, the bid has not been accepted. The RFP went out. Um, for bidders on the state portal, the DAS portal, um, we have identified a lowest bidder, but we have not accepted the bid. Okay, but the, the board agenda said the winner has been accepted. So that language should be amended to say for. We, we 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 received two bids on the project and the lowest bidder would be our preference, but we have not awarded the bid to anyone yet pending board approval. So is the recommendation for us to take action tonight on the lowest uh, accepting the lowest bid? Yes, please. Okay. So that language finally needs to be in the motion corrected to reflect not for for which a bid winner has been accepted, but for which the lowest bid has been recommended. Correct. The if if I if I can just mention the the time constraint for this project. I put this project out for bid last year and we received no bids whatsoever because there's a shortage of contractors to perform the work. And the person, the people that have bid on this project, we've done business with in the past many times, they have made it very clear to me that because of the time constraints, if they don't receive a decision within a week, that there is a chance that this project may not happen over the April break and it's a five day project and we cannot have the walk-ins down during uh, while school is in session. So this this is really important to get this approved. Well, we're just we're just trying to get it approved the right word tonight here. So um we corrected the wording. So the people who made that motion, Brendan and Katina second, do you accept the rewording? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion that's on the floor, please indicate by raising your hands. Uh, Hilda voted yes, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And then item C, approval of purchase of new food services van. And the cost is there, $59,342.90. So Motion made by Brendan. Do I get a second? Seconded by Paula. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion that's on the floor, please indicate by raising your hand. It's unanimous, including Hilda. Thank you. And Thank you, board members. D policies for repeal, which have items one through thirteen. I'd like to obtain a motion to approve this full slate of policies to repeal. Okay. Same. Motion made by Tina, seconded by Alicia. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. It's unanimous, including Ilda. I like having the screen right here, rather than having to look over there. Um, okay, now we're on to public comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak there in public comment? 
Hearing and seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.59. I move, we move. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Have a